Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Emax Tiny Hawk 2 Race Microsized FPV Racer. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, update its ESC firmware and configure it to work with Betaflight RPM filter, and finally head outdoors and test it using 1S and 2S batteries. In terms of packaging, just like the other members of the Emax Tiny Hawk series, the race edition comes inside this nice camera case. In addition to the quadcopter, you're getting a single set of Emacs Avant Blur 2-inch propellers, two 450mAh 1S LHV batteries with a PH2.0 connector, a simple USB charger that is going to enable you to charge six batteries simultaneously, some stickers, extra screws, a small Phillips screwdriver, and a PH2.0 plug that is going to enable you to use a single 1S battery instead of connecting two in series. In terms of specs, the Emax Tiny Hawk 2 Race is using 1103 7500 kV motors which support 1S and 2S batteries, pretty durable Emax Avant Blur 2 inch tri bladed propellers. On the top side of the quadcopter, well protected inside this plastic mount that enables you to change the camera angle, you can find the Runcom Nano 2 nano sized FEV camera. Under the canopy, you can find the same electronic components which are being used by the Emax Tiny Hawk 2. The F4 all-in-one flight controller features an integrated 4-in-1 BLLES 5A ESC and came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.0. A 16 volts 100 microfarad capacitor is pre-soldered to its battery pads. The motors are soldered directly to the motor pads, so if you'd like to save some weight, you can remove the motor connectors. The micro USB port and the boot button are located over here, and the bind button is located on the bottom side of the flight controller. On top of the flight controller, you can find a 37 channels VTX that supports smart audio and has a selectable output strength of 25, 100, and 200 millivolts. The battery connector uses two JST PH2.0 connectors with solid pin headers that are connected in series, which means that if you'd like to use a single 1S battery, you will need to use the provided jumper. And finally, an SPI FR Sky receiver, which supports both D8 and D16 protocols, is built into the flight controller. On the bottom of the Tiny Oak Race 2, you can find a unibody carbon fiber plate. It provides some protection for the motors. Its thickness is 2mm, its wheelbase is 90mm, and it is using a stretch X pattern. As for its weight, without a battery, the Tiny Hawk Race 2 weighs 46.5 grams. Including a single 450mAh 1S LHV battery and the JST plug, it weighs 59.7 grams. And including two 1S batteries, which is the recommended setup in my opinion, the total weight is 72.2 grams. Configuring the Tiny Hawk Race 2 is quite simple. First, in case you already attached the propellers, I highly recommend to remove them. Then connect the flight controller to your computer. Then open up Betaflight and hit connect. By default, the built-in FRSky SPI RX receiver is going to be configured to FRSky D, which means that you will need to bind your radio controller using FRSky D8 protocol. In case your radio controller does not support FRSky D8 protocol, you can change it to FRSky X, and then you'll be able to bind it using D16 protocol. In case your radio controller supports both, I recommend to leave it configured to FRSky D, because in my experience, it's a more reliable protocol when using these SPI RX receivers. In order to bind the radio receiver with your radio controller, you have two options. First, you can press the bind button for two seconds. And the second option, which is more convenient in my opinion, is to head over to the CLI tab on Betaflight and enter bind underscore RX. Then after selecting the desired protocol on your radio controller, hit bind and then make sure that all the sticks are working properly under the receiver tab in Betaflight. As you can see right now, the sticks are not configured properly, so I have to map it to the classic FRSky interface, so I can choose over here FRSky, and after hitting save, everything is configured properly. The next step is to define your favorite flight modes, and set up your favorite on-screen display elements. As for setting up the video transmitter, since it supports TBS Smart Audio Protocol, it is pretty simple. The VTX table is pre-configured for you under the Video Transmitter tab, so over here you can set up the frequency and also the output strength. By default, the VTX is going to be set to Race Band 4, and if I would like to change it to F1, which is 5740, I will choose Fetch Arc, Channel 1, 
the power is now set to 25 millivolts, but if you'd like, you can set it to either 100 or 200 millivolts. And if you'd like, you can also choose the low power on this arm to on or off. And I recommend to set it to on until first arm, which means that if you will set the power to 200 millivolts, for example, until you are going to arm the quadcopter for the first time, the VTX is going to be set to 25 millivolts, so it's less likely to overheat until you're going to arm your quadcopter. After choosing the configuration, don't forget to hit save, and now the VTX is going to be configured. Another option for setting up your video transmitter, which you should be familiar with and is very convenient when you're on the go, is to use Betaflight's OSD. In order to enter the configuration menu, put the throttle at mid position, go to the left, and pinch to the top. Then over here you can navigate through the options using the pitch and roll sticks. And for setting up this video transmitter, you will need to head over to features, then select VTX SA, which stands for VTX Smart Audio. And then over here you can configure the frequency and the output strength. So for example, if I would like to set the VTX to 5760, I will choose fetch up channel number two. And if I would like to set the output power strength to 100 millivolts, I can select it over here. And in order to set the settings, head over to the set option and select yes. Now, as you can see, the channel was changed. And now I change it back to channel number one. Now I'm going to show you how to update the firmware of the BLLES 4-in-1 ESC using Jazz Mavericks firmware and configure the RPM filter on Betaflight. This is of course not a mandatory step, but since it's not complicated and will extend your flight time, I recommend to give it a try. When doing a hovering test, I got close to 5 minutes of flight time when the RPM filter wasn't configured and about 8 minutes of flight time when the RPM filter was set, so this is a huge difference. And on real flights, when comparing the two options, I think that the actual difference in flight time between the two is between 10 to 20%. The first thing that you need to do is to head over to this page on Jazz Mavericks repository page on GitHub. The firmware that I chose to use is 16.77 48 kHz. Head over to this page and search for this version. For your convenience, I'm going to leave a direct link to this version in the description box of this video. After clicking it, right click on row and download the linked file. Now you need to connect the flight controller to your computer. Make sure that the propellers are not attached and power up the Tiny Hawk Race 2. Open up the Build Heli Configurator app, hit connect and press read setup. As you can see, I've already flashed the 4-in-1 ESC with the 16.77 firmware, but originally it came with 16.7 firmware. Before flashing the firmware, I recommend to make sure that the battery is fully charged, hit flash all, click select file manually, select the file that you previously downloaded, and press open. The whole process is going to take about 40 seconds and in the end of it you're going to see the updated firmware version next to each ESC. Now in order to complete the setup, open up Betaflight, head over to the configuration tab, change the ESC slash motor protocol to DSHOT 300, check the bidirectional DSHOT switch, change the gyro update frequency and the PID loop frequency to 4 kHz and hit save and reboot. Now in order to make sure that everything was configured properly, head over to the motors tab, plug in the battery, again with no propellers, click the I understand the risk switch, check that all the motors are working, and the error next to each motor is 0%. If you see an error of 100%, it means that something in the process wasn't configured properly. After testing out the Tiny Hawk Race 2, I can tell you that this is definitely one of my favorite micro quadcopters as it is very agile, extremely fun to fly, and it is very resilient and after crashing it many times, it only suffered damage to its propellers. Since you are only getting a single set of propellers inside the kit, I highly recommend to get at least two more sets, so in case one of the propellers break, you can simply replace it without having to wait for another set of propellers to arrive. In addition, the run camera on tube camera is greatly protected inside the case and it performed great during the day but didn't excel at night. And even though a single 1S battery is supported, the quadcopter doesn't perform great using a single 1S battery and I recommend to use the 2S setup which should provide you with about 4 minutes of flight time and if you want to slow things down, I recommend to lower the angle of the camera. As for the video transmitter, the video was clear even when the VTX was set to 25mV 
and you are going to be pretty much limited by the range of the built-in SPI RX receiver, which is between 200 to 300 meters. I'm going to wrap up this video with some flat footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos, and goodbye.